Hey guys, welcome back to another one of these where I show you how I did the thing. <laughs> That's the official name for the series, I guess. Uh, today we're covering how I made Journey, which is one of my favorite originals I've ever produced. So without further ado, uh, let's get right to it. So much like the way these always go, we're going to go in order of the instruments as they appear in the song. So the first thing you hear is this brainstormer patch. This is a sine wave. It's just, just a simple sine wave, not much else. It has some filters on it and a bit of reverb. And it sort of acts like a, um, a sort of belly type chord sort of thing. It sounds like this. Nice. And the chord progression it plays in the song, which is a chord progression for most of the song, is this. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty simple instrument, but I like how simple it is. I like how simple a lot of the instruments in this song are, and they are nice. Next is nothing too incredibly special. It's just some reversed rides, which are the only cymbal percussion in this song other than the hi-hats. Just got some, uh, an auto filter and some delay on it along some reverb. And also occasionally it will uh, do a hit afterwards where it isn't reversed like this. And just to make it a bit more powerful. Um, next, we have my favorite instrument, African bars. A bit quiet. Uh, and it plays the same chord progression as the. Um, as the brainstormer patch does, except some of the notes have been lowered down an octave to make it feel wider. And the rundown part. I love that ending chord so much. <laughs> And uh, nextly, there's a bass. This is just a simple, regular sub bass, nothing too special. Uh, sounds like not that. Here we go. And it plays a pretty simple uh, bass line. However, towards the end of the song, it also plays some chords on a higher melody. Uh, it has the same sign sound as the brainstorming patch we talked about, but it doesn't have any of those reverb -y effects. It's a lot drier, which makes it good for an ending, I think. And next are the drums. So for this, rather than going with a drum kit, I actually used a, a drum machine, this one called a Drumart. And the reason I went for this is because this tends to have pretty low quality samples, no offense. And um, that's why I used it for this. I wanted to go for a somewhat lo-fi feel for this song. Uh, so much so that I even added some filters to the drums to filter out some of the frequencies. And this is one of the most complex drum patterns I've ever made, um, on my own at least. And I think it sounds uh, pretty cool. Over here, it plays a slightly different section, uh, part during the rundown section. That sort of water droplet sound you hear is this uh, note. I don't know why I like it so much. I think I just think it's neat. All right, the thing that gets introduced next is the melody, which is played on a vital synthesizer that I made. Uh, if we load this up here. It is made with a sine wave that has some form scale on it, a square wave with a bit of harmonic stretch that's modulated by this uh, random 
a low, um, random LFO, and a little bit of brown noise with some form scale on it to give it a bit of a harmonic. And it's also got some chorus, a filter, and a little bit of reverb. And it sounds like this. And then it switches over to the right a little bit because it gets complemented by this other um, melody playing the same thing. Uh, so, or under this other instrument playing the same melody. So this is an electric piano off of the Keyzone Classic uh, Piano VST. It's also got some filters and some reverb on it, and it sounds like this. It's panned to the left a bit. And accompanying all of that is this violin, which I have made to be sort of low quality. I even have a down sample on it. So you can hear a little bit of that hissing coming from the redux. So it's also got some reverb and some filters on it. And it plays the same chord progression as the African bars. I think it sounds really cool. Sort of melancholy, I guess, is the word. It's bittersweet. I like the way it sounds. Yeah, the only other next instrument that kind of gets introduced... Oh, no, there's that one too. But this is a separate bass than the other one. It's the same sort of idea, except I've given it a saturator, and I've also made it much louder, but I've given it an envelope so the loud doesn't last for too long, and it's sort of punchy, if that makes sense, uh, here. plays about the same thing as the other bass line does. That last note's pretty low. Uh, these two bass lines actually join up in the final part here, which makes the bass overall a bit louder. And I like the way it sounds. Uh, the final instrument get introduced, track 10, is this bright marimba sound, which um, some of you may recognize as... That's way too low, hold on. The instrument, same one used in the original Stardust. And it actually plays the Stardust melody quietly in the background, pan to the right of it. It's a bit subtle, you can definitely hear it in the background of the song, which I like, sort of a callback. Um, a lot of my songs actually have the Stardust melody hidden somewhere in there. Cool Mist does, for example, in a similar fashion with a piano. But um, yeah, so that's all of the instruments in the song. And um, there's one more thing I wanted to go over, which is like the composition of this. So um, this chord progression, and I'll use uh, this instrument for the example, this chord progression here is the bass chords were gotten from a, a chord pack because I was lacking inspiration, but then I tweaked around with it a bit. So I liked this these four chords here. And that was really cool. And I thought, well, what if they ran down a bit? So this happened. And originally it was just this chord here for the entire thing. Then I thought, what if we made it just a little bit dissonant at the end and the first note goes chromatically down one for the next chord. So the progression ends up being. And that chord there, I don't know, something about it is just quite emotional, I guess. I really enjoy it, personally. 
and um, as for the melody, the melody was genuinely made by me putting down random notes that were in the scale and hoping they worked, and it kind of ended up working. Um, it's a bit not out of time, but a lot of the stuff happens on the offbeat, so if I turn on the metronome here, you can hear that. And especially given the delay that it has, where it sounds like it's playing more note than one. And then there's the second part here. And you may notice that the first part doesn't follow the metronome. It's on the offbeats, and the, f and the second part sticks to it very closely. So that you can hear, like, it makes the melody stand out a bit more, at least in my opinion. It makes it more memorable. Uh, if you have the melody entirely on the offbeats, then it can sound odd or it can get drowned out and be easily forgettable. And even more so if you have it on just on the beats. But if you have a nice mixture of both, I think that's a good thing. As for the bass line, this is nothing special. I took the bottom note of each chord and switched up the octave occasionally. Not really anything incredibly special and um, the motivation for making the bass play these notes at the end of the song actually came from an accident that happened while composing this is fine version 2 the remix where I accidentally put the ending chords into the bass line instead of into the lead and I really liked the way it sounded for the ending of that song so I kind of stole that idea and did it intentionally with this one and now the obligatory part where I tell you what my favorite section of the song is uh, that's a really tough call man um, I think it's a the entire song's good um, I think a lot of them are on the same tier I really like the way the transition from this into the like intro from the intro into the first like first I guess sounds I really love this transition something about it can't explain it it's really good I think it's because um, I've actually automated the um, auto filter frequency here so that you can hear at the beginning here the chords are really like filtered out but then as you get further along during the rundown you can see it gets less and less filtered out as that goes along you can hear them become more full and I don't know, I really enjoy that transition. The same thing happens when the melody gets introduced. Notice how this is the exact same sequence as the intro. And then drums into the drop. This first drop might actually be my favorite part of the song, despite the fact that it's pretty much identical to the second drop, other than the fact that the second drop has like the Stardust melody and the extra bass line, just because of the transition into it. Um, I think the second drop is better overall, but the transition into it isn't as special, it's pretty average. Like the chords were already filled out, and the melody was there too, playing like a much louder, less filtered bell sound. So it doesn't hit you quite as hard as this transition does. Um, that and I really enjoy the ending with these chords. of the ride the song fades out so yeah that's how I made journey it's um 
I was up till uh, 4.30 in the morning making it, but honestly, I think it was pretty good. Inspiration struck very late at night, and I wanted to act on it instead of sleeping on it, and it helped me get through the artist block. Uh, this is one of my favorite originals I've made to date. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, too. Um, if you like what you see, uh, consider subscribing, and if you really like what you see, uh, consider supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee, which is sort of like a Patreon. Uh, you don't need to or anything. Uh, it's not an obligation, but if you feel like it, it would be much appreciated. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.